Hey, what's up everybody? Too Tall Toby here. And in today's On Shape Quick Tip, we're gonna talk about recreating some of the mates from this assembly. Now in our last video, we showed how we were able to take this assembly from SolidWorks, export it using pack to zip and then import it into Onshape so that we can continue working on this project in Onshape. This assembly in SolidWorks has a lot of mates. You can see there's a lot of mates here. And ultimately what these mates are doing is they are allowing us to turn this tuner, this is a guitar tuner, so that that peg up top will spin and tighten or loosen the string on the guitar. Well, this is a lot of mates here in SolidWorks and unfortunately none of those mates came across into Onshape. So now the question is, how can we quickly recreate that environment in Onshape where we go to turn this tuner and the gears all spin and uh, everything works the way it's supposed to work in the real world? Well, we can do this actually pretty easily in Onshape by identifying which components are intended to move together. And what I mean by that is this component here, kind of this outside housing of the assembly is always going to be moving with this upper washer, this upper bushing, this upper threaded part, then this nut part here. There's several parts there that will always move together. And similarly, if I hide that housing, we've got this internal component here, this uh, screw and this gear and then the peg up top which will all move together. And then we've got these remaining components that you can see here on screen, the, the tuner head itself. There's a couple of nylon washers here, the uh, spur gear and the uh, piece of hardware here, this ma machine screw that's holding everything together. Those are all gonna move together as well when we're mating these components together. So what that means is that we can utilize what's called a group mate in Onshape. So here you can see we've got this option for group and with group, what we basically say is that all these components will always kind of be locked together or will move together. So you can see we were able to select those several components there. And when we hit the green check mark, if we move any one of those components, they all move together. So let me use control Z here to undo that. Now, I think that this component is gonna become the foundation for our assembly. So I'm gonna go over to the tree here and right mouse button on that component. That's that kind of overall housing. And from the right mouse button, I'm gonna choose fix. That way, this component is no longer able to move around when I go to drag it. Let me also hide that component so I can see some of these internal components. So now what I'm going to do is perform another group command. I'll pick this component, this component, this component, this component, and this component. And then I'll hit the green check mark and we can see that now all of those components are gonna move together. Let me do a control Z to undo that movement. And then I'm going to once again perform a group command. This time this group command will be on this component, this component, and this component. And now whenever I go to move those components, we can see that once again, they are grouped together. They will all move together. So now I will once again do a control Z. And now it's really just a matter of us getting in here and adding some mates between these components and their mate connectors. So I'm gonna show that housing once again, and I'm going to go to a mate command. Let's make this one a revolute mate. So we'll choose here from our, our mate types. We're gonna choose the revolute mate. And that revolute mate is gonna take place here between this end face of this component and this uh, circular edge on this component kind of bring those two components together so that they essentially are related to one another coplanar on these end faces and then concentric I'm, I'm establishing a concentric mate between these two components and now i'm going to do something similar here with the uh with with this component and with um maybe what i'll do is i'll relate this to one of these internal components so let me hide this housing here and i think what i'll do is i'll create a relationship between this component here this threaded kind of sleeve component here and then the peg which is rotating so let me just get a quick measurement here the measurement from this face to this face if i just look down here in the lower right corner i can see that distance is uh 10 point two one zero eight so let's make sure that we kind of remember what that distance is now we're going to go to a revolute mate this is going to take place between this face and this face here and we're going to say that that's going to be at an offset of negative ten point two oh two one zero eight and there we go that 
that creates that distance dimension between those two. And when we hit the check mark here, we can see that now this component is also set up with a Revolute Mate so that it's spinning correctly. This component here is set up with a Revolute Mate so that it is spinning correctly. And now the only thing really left to do on these components is go into a gear relation. And with the gear relation in Onshape, what we do is we pick two existing mates. So I'm gonna pick that first Revolute Mate and I'm gonna pick that second Revolute mate. And I'm gonna say that that relationship is at a relationship of uh, 0 0.053 to one. So I just type in the 0 0.053 and this is gonna be going in the reverse direction here. And now we can see that when we go to spin one of these components, we get the uh, we get the results that we were hoping for. You can see that when we spin the one component, the other component moves. The only problem here really right now is the alignment of these teeth. And so if I go in here, let me just reset both of these Revolute mates, make sure that they're kind of back to neutral. And I'm just gonna go in here and edit this Revolute mate and just kind of adjust the secondary axis. Sometimes you get lucky here. Yeah, like in this case, I was able to get lucky there and I was able to get those to line up. And what that all means is that now, if I were to go to a animation of one of these mates, let's say I go to this first mate here and I choose to animate it, I can actually see what this thing is gonna look like as we are turning that tuning key. So we can see here that Onshape does a really nice job of allowing us to use the animation option. Let's increase this instead of uh, 360, let's make it uh, 360 times four for the uh, total rotations there. And then let's play this thing. And there we can really see what this is gonna look like as that gear is turning. We can change the angle of it. This is something that I really like in Onshape. And hey, if you like looking at this kind of stuff, be sure to hit the like button on this video. Uh, I think this really makes Onshape a great tool for kind of validating your designs and making sure that all of your mates are set up correctly. But this I think looks great. And so at this point, I'll stop that animation. And I think I'm now ready to show that housing and move on with my changes to this design or maybe even reuse this tuner in a future design because now I am confident that all those mates are set up and work correctly. You can see that instead of having that huge stack of like 30 mates, we were able to accomplish the same exact thing here in Onshape just using a few mates here, three group mates, two Revolute mates and one gear mate. And we were able to get to that same spot that we were in in SolidWorks with all those mates. And I think that's just another reason that you're gonna see so much better performance from your on shape assemblies. So let me know down in the comments if you have any questions about this video. And of course, be sure to like, be sure to subscribe and be sure to come back for the next on shape video.